Ronald, are you okay with that, that I put you on YouTube? Yes, I'm okay with that. So, did you already hear that they're gonna probably close the park down on Thursday? Yeah, that's uh, what the safety and sanitation has been telling someone else. And uh, the bottom line is they wanna move us into a grand hotel that's going bankrupt because the tourists are not coming there. So they went to FEMA to open some rooms for the homeless. So the city wants to put all of us homeless in this hotel. The trouble with that turnkey is three months, six months, what do we do? They don't find us any housing. They don't help us with whatever problems we have. They don't do any uh, mental counseling or drug counseling or any of that stuff that's right up here at the Dream House Center. Dream Center has been taking care of this park for a long time and coming in and cleaning up. The staff actually in the park that's hired by the city, state, whoever the parks and recreation are, don't even want to do their job. They don't put enough toilet paper in a toilet. We started a job corps over here. We started a garden. We put in our own showers. This is the homeless. The homeless people did that, not the staff. Uh, so now all of a sudden, within less than a week, they want us to pick up everything and leave, you know? And part of it is COVID, but most of it is political because of these hotels that are gonna file bankruptcy, they have mortgages in the bank. I'm a 160 year, 106 year old, excuse me, uncle that was on the board in 1970. He knows how these people work. He didn't like it when he was on the board. So they pass it on and dump on the homeless, the least fortunate people in all of LA, you know, to have a place. They don't have enough places. And even if you go to those places, you got three, six months and you're back to square one. So they left us alone for over a year and we've done a lot of work around here. We clean up. One tenor left a mess over there. We counsel them, don't leave a mess, pick it up. You know, I've had people, I put three different tents with another guy up behind me from the religious group that didn't have a place to stay for a couple nights. So they have a place to stay before they get a job or get someplace else. So we have helped more than anybody from the outside. On this situation here, they're gonna protest. I'm gonna walk with them. There's 60 people from the outside here that don't wanna see us move. And that's going to be tomorrow at 7, that's right? It's going to be tomorrow at the press conference. They're going to be there. People from the outside of the homeless, you know, and they're supporting us too that they don't have enough housing. And even if you do, like I say, you go into one of those turnkeys and you have three, six months, you know, free, and then what? They don't offer any help after that. That's it. And that's the last like you don't feel like it's safer to be inside than being outside here, even if it's for a few months? You Not at all, because the COVID has been minimal, minimal down here at Echo Park. You don't you don't even hardly ever hear of anybody doing the COVID. Out there, you get COVID and you get all the kinds of people coming into those hotels. And I am Bible because of my cancer and because of my medical condition. So uh, it's going to put me in a real, a real situation. A Are you nervous situation. about that? Are you having anxiety about that? Or no, you an that? no anxiety, sir. But I do have a strong uh, 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 feeling about this. It's a fear psychology that they're using us to get rid of our choices. We have no freedom of choice. Like I say, I was in service 26 years, 10 years for working for IBM Blue before I retired. Uh, and the only reason I came out here is because I was stupid on vacation. My wife had died. I let somebody, I invited somebody into my house. Check this out. 
six months later, they claimed squatter rights. Uh oh. And I didn't even know what squatter rights were. Ten lawyers wouldn't even take my case. Okay, I finally found a lawyer who does it, but he says, don't leave the property. So I say, well, what do you suggest? He says, put a little camper motorhome on that back lot that your family's had for a long time. So I ended up putting the tent out there because I had a cousin and his wife that were over here. He lost his job. And he said, just put a tent back there and uh, have the lawyer take some pictures. So that's what happened. He took some pictures and the civil court is so backed up the, the police cannot get them out of my own house without something from the court. Where was the house at? They have it in Downey. Downey? Downey. And they have to have a court order in order for them to evict them, which is quite a right. So, so anyway, that's my, that's my issue. And I'm sure by moving to, into a, a situation they, well, excuse me, that, 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 that they would put me in, would put me in jeopardy in the court case. Now, I don't even know if they're gonna get a lawyer and they might move before the citation told them they had to appear in court in the first of July. So they might just move right before that, but they put me through cost for the lawyer, all that. So this, this basically, in a way, has saved me some money. And they have good, uh, 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 like, commodities here. People come through here from outside all the time looking after our health. And so we do ours. We clean up. Uh, for a while, they were paying uh, the man on the other side that runs the community kitchen. He's been here a long time. They were paying him so much money to give to whoever to make $40 a day. I thought that was wonderful. These people could make $40 So you can actually go there and they cook for you over there? Or? They, they cook. Oh, yeah. You, they have meals all the time. A, a community kitchen all the time. You get a hot meal or whatever. Or you can go up to the dream center up here and get a hot meal. How about showers? Can you take any showers anywhere? Got two showers, brand new, put, put them in. And uh, the showers first were, the mayor said, well, you can't have showers. I did it a couple years ago. Uh, but sanitation-wise, we have showers. And then they bring two homeless organizations bring showers on Wednesday and Friday right now on Wednesday. So we have plenty of places to stay clean. There's no excuse for not being clean. The United Methodist Church, right off of, of the sunset, offer showers two times a week, Tuesday and Thursday, and they give clothes and all that. All you uh, whatever, you know, hair, combs, all that. Now there's plenty of p places to go and people to uh, uh, help us. But if worse comes to worse on Thursday and you have to leave, what are you going to do? I'm going to go and stay on my back lot and be in, be in a safety situation out in the open without people around me. This is a secure place where people look after each other. That's important. Yeah, of course. I wish you the best of luck, man. And yeah. I really appreciate you talking to me. No problem, sir. Yeah, I, um, I have a lot of issues. And like I say, if I go into one of these shelters and in there, um, my, my health is in jeopardy, really. It really is. Uh, most of the people that have died in Los Angeles County are over 66. I have cancer. I have a, a high blood pressure. I, well, anyway, I have some issues in that way. So I pull that way. This, I've been here almost a year now. No cold, no nothing. I felt good, healthy. I get up and walk early. I go to the kitchen. I eat something. And Street Watch has a deal for your phone that on Monday, uh, Wednesday, and Saturday, you take your phone over there and they charge it right here on the ground. Oh, okay, I didn't know that. I was wondering how you get electricity here. So they do all that for oh, you. Oh, yeah. And there's people with generators. And you can go plug in with those of them if you ever want to. They, they, they're free with that. There's probably five or six people with generators that buy gas and help others out. So. And 
how do you feel about your situation? Do you ever think like you want to live like a normal, not homeless life? You want like an apartment back and you want to... I want my house back. Okay. You want your house back? Of course I want my house back. My grandfather worked on it, my father worked on it, I worked on it, my son worked on it. My son's up in Idaho and he's concerned. Uh, of course they want me to move up there, but it's so cold in the wintertime and so hot in, in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. It's an extreme change of temperature. And and uh, he really wants me to move up there, but uh, I've known LA too long. I'm familiar with the people. I'm familiar with my surroundings. I'd have to start over again at my age. Yeah. <laughs> and can I ask you, how do you feel when people like me come up to you and ask you to do an interview? Do you feel, you feel like you're the exposed or you, you like that that people talk to you or how, what is your feeling about it? Well, I'm not antisocial and uh, my my condition and the situation I'm out here under is well known by all the homeless and people out here. They know my situation. Uh, they come up to me often and say, you need anything at all? You know, I, I've had people walk up with a $5 bill and I say, no, I'm okay, I'm okay. Because uh, they're trying to help, you know, that they're, they're, they're Christians probably, you know, that are really trying to help people out. So it, it, it's nothing like people imagine that we're all living down here in the dirt and we're dirty and all that. It's nothing like yeah, that. Yeah, but that's what a lot of people actually write. They say, how can they stand outside all the time? It's cold and windy. I mean, well, now I, have a I see you have like a whole bunch of blankets over here. So, oh yeah, I, I actually, uh, for a long time, took uh they have free voucher i took the blankets up the second hand blankets even and bought new ones and gave them out on the second bicycle out front on glendale to the homeless that was my whole premise of blanket project that was me okay <laughs> but it got a little bit too heavy for me and i handed it off to a couple other uh, christians up there at the second bicycle they still do the same they buy them blankets they buy them different stuff they need you know, there's several Christian organizations and uh, Muslim and, and other religions that come in here to help out. They want us here. They want us secure. They want us safe. So, and can I ask you if you you still have dreams or you you wish for something or what? What do you? What is? What oh, do you, you think? mean American dream? No, I mean like your dreams. You know, everybody's like, oh, I want to do this. I'm going to buy this. I'm going to do this. What is your inspiration? What you want to accomplish until you die? Is there anything you're looking well, forward to? Or my wife passed about four years ago, and we traveled a lot on the weekends. She'd have it all packed up and ready to go, and we camped out a lot. So I wasn't unfamiliar with camping out, and. Uh, I enjoy it. It's, it's like, uh, to me, a hobby right now. It's my hobby. Okay. It's my life. Uh, I, I've been diagnosed with cancer, and we don't know what our day is. The Lord calls us home. And I'm happy with what I'm doing right now. Uh, this is disruptive. Um, I do feel that part of it is because these multimillionaires built these hotels and they have no tourists during the COVID, so their mortgage is due at the bank. So they go to FEMA and say, hey, why don't you put a bunch of those homeless in our hotel? I mean, this was probably behind the scenes and everything, so we don't know, it's political, but uh, so they want to shove us into the hotel so they can get the money from FEMA to pay their mortgage, because some of those places are going to go bankrupt because they build them for the Olympics. And then this COVID come up and a lot of people don't realize how much trouble they're in investing in a whole bunch of money in grand hotels and all that type of stuff. Think about it, if you were in that position, you'd do anything you could. And I guess the low key, we're the low on the totem pole. So they say, oh, well, take all the homeless out of uh, Venice, uh, take all the homeless out of uh, Echo Park, uh, take all the homeless out of uh, uh, MacArthur Park. Uh, and they just happened to come to Echo Park first. Uh, I think Mr. Farrell knows all about this. He knows all about those hotels not getting up to He's a representative of this area. And he's probably got some millionaire friends that have invested in those things. 
and, and I'm telling you the truth, the tourism is not going to be here for maybe another year. Yeah. Because people are not traveling. Ronald, I just want to say thank you again very much for talking to me. I wish you the best of luck, and I hope the viewers learned something about the situation. They want to know what your opinion is. They always write me. They say, can you interview some people? You know, so Good. I appreciate you talking to me, man. Yeah, I hope. I wish you well in your business, too, because I have a couple people that I've known for a long time that they're going to have to close their door. They're just not the, the traffic and the, because of the COVID. Thank you, man. You bet.